In this video, I'll be giving a consequence of Euclidean algorithm as this theorem, which says that if k is strictly positive, then GCD of k comma kb is equal to k times the GCD of a comma b. And then as a uh, corollary to the this theorem, I can have this for any k which is not equal to zero. GCD of k comma kb is equal to absolute value of k multiplied by GCD of a comma b. So let us first prove this theorem, and from there we can derive the reasoning for this corollary also so now we present the proof of the theorem and in the proof of the theorem i have two proofs so let me to first give the proof as by the definition and in the definition i am going to first pick up the number a and b and apply the same step which we apply for the euclidean algorithm in my last video we have talked about the euclidean algorithm step so considering the two integers so let us consider a and b these are two integers such that a is greater than or equal to b and we have also considered that b is strictly positive and in this we have applied the euclidean algorithm so applying euclidean algorithm so we get the following step and now looking at these steps of the euclidean algorithm and we know that this sequence is finite so it's going to terminate because b r1 up till so on these are the integers and hence we claim that in the Euclidean algorithm that the GCD of a comma b is equal to Rn. Now here I require the GCD of Ka and Kb. So I will multiply K on both sides. So I get this multiplying K on both sides. So this equation holds just following the previous step. So I'll call this whole previous step as star. So following the similar step we get this procedure. So multiplying K on both sides and similarly in the remainder also this k comes now following the previous uh, steps of the euclidean algorithm we directly see that this sequence of remainders that is bk is greater than r1 k and so on this is finite and it is going to terminate so we get gcd of ka and kb which is here these are the first two terms that we have selected and we got the remainder as r and k so this is equal to uh, GCD of this is equal to R N K and this is same as K times R N. We already know that R N is the, the GCD of A comma B. So this is same as GCD of A comma B and that proves our result. That what we desired as a consequences of the Euclidean algorithm. Another very simple proof of this theorem is that we need to prove that GCD of K A comma K B this is equal to k times gcd of a comma b and for k strictly positive now we know that this result also we have done in my previous video that whenever d is the gcd of the two number integers a and b so i can write d as a linear combination of these two number ax plus by for some x and y belonging to integer now following this result we can write the left hand side as let's say that d is the gcd of k a and k b so that means i can write d as linear combination of this so this is k a x plus k b y and let's call this side gcd of a comma b so let me to call d dash this is the gcd of a comma b and in the similar process i can write this also the, as a linear combination of something a x plus b y for some x and y belonging to integer so that means this is same as d times k a x plus b y and this result is exactly same as this so this is same as d is equal to k into d dash now taking an example for this theorem let's consider if i want to find the gcd of 12 and 30 so one way is that right with all divisors of 12 and divisor of 30 we find the largest one or we apply the division algorithm on 12 and 30 or we can take the common from this 12 and 30 so here the common is 3 so inside we will have gcd of 4 and 10 and then again i can take a common from 4 and 10 so which is 2 and inside i will have gcd of 2 comma 5 so now we know there is nothing common the gcd of 2 comma 5 is 1 they are relatively prime so this is 6 into 1 and the gcd of 12 and 30 is 6 now let us prove the corollary and in the corollary we have considered that k is not equal to 0 and we want to show that gcd of k and kb is equal to absolute value of k gcd of a comma b in just the previous theorem we have shown that whenever k is positive so we can write down the gcd of ka and kb this is same as k times gcd of a comma b so this is just we have proved by last theorem so this means it is sufficient enough to consider when k is negative so whenever k is negative we can we note that minus of k is equal to absolute value of k which is strictly positive so now we can write gcd of a k and b k this is same as gcd of negative of these integers that is minus a k minus b k and now because this is minus k and that is same as absolute value of k 
so i'm going to replace now this value as absolute value of k multiply by a and absolute value of k multiply by b now in this case absolute value of k becomes strictly positive so i can apply the theorem so by last theorem that we have just done absolute value of k can come out inside we will have gcd of a and b and that proves our corollary